What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'm gonna show you how to create a Windows service in C Sharp code using Visual Studio and the .NET framework. So this is something I was doing earlier in the week uh, for work and so I thought I'd make a useful video because I know a lot of people are curious about making and setting up Windows services and in Visual Studio with C Sharp and the .NET framework is kind of the easiest way to make a Windows service that I've found personally. And so to do this, let's just get started. Let's dive right into it. Uh, open up your Visual Studio and we're gonna do uh, create a new project and search for templates and just say um, Windows service in here. And there should be an option for Windows service with .NET framework like you can see right here. Um, so just go ahead and make one of those. Call it whatever you want the project name to be. I'll call it uh, Windows service tutorials hit create what you're gonna see is we really only need to modify slash add like two three lines of code and then run the like service installer to do this entire thing um, so what should boot up for you hopefully is the same screen that I have right now and I know it's gonna be kinda of small um, especially if you're watching this on a phone but basically this whole middle screen is service uh, whatever dot CS service1.cs, just right click somewhere in that middle and hit add installer. Um, so essentially that's gonna just create all this stuff that you can maybe see on your right. It's gonna create this project installer uh, file. And so it's gonna take you to project installer.cs and then design right in here. Um, but your solution explorer now has underneath project installer, hopefully, project installer.designer.cs, okay? So um, that's good, but now inside of this file, we wanna right click and we wanna hit view code. You can also hit the F7 key, which is a shortcut, but we're gonna go to view code and hopefully you have exactly this already generated for you. Uh, that sh should be what you're seeing. If not, you can pause and type in all these lines I'm not gonna go through what all of them do, just understand C Sharp and Visual Studio are giving you the backbone of what you need to create a Windows service, okay? Um, so uh, in here, we don't have to change anything right now, but click on the initialize component um, uh, f uh, call right here, right click, and then we're going to go to the definition. So that's F12, which is the shortcut, or you can just click here, go to definition. <clears throat> And now it should take you into something quite a bit longer here um, with, that has a lot more going on. And you can see the core definition of initialized component. And so all we're going to add in here are a few things that don't come by default. Um, so underneath the service process installer one, but right above the uh, password and username. And this is also where you could give it credentials that it needs to prompt you for to start or end the service. Um, I'm gonna leave them as null because for this tutorial, I don't want to put credentials on it. But one line we are going to add is this dot service process installer one dot, and then account with a capital A equals, and then system dot service process dot service account dot local system. And this is basically saying that, and make sure you spell everything right. This is basically just saying that I want the account associated with this service to be whatever's actively logged in. So um, you're just making a very easy shortcut to say, hey, uh, whoever's logged in can run this service. Um, and now right above this where it says um, the service name is going to be service one, which is just kind of the default. Um, let's add a few things. We're gonna add a description and a display name. And to do that, it's gonna be this dot service installer one dot description. And when it comes time to installer, make sure you spell that right. Um, and when it comes time to see like, well, how are these actually used? That's gonna come up when we actually install it on our machine and start running it. So you're gonna see whatever you put here, um, you're gonna see it again later. So I'm gonna call it Windows Service Tutorial, just like that, because that's what I named the whole thing. Um, don't forget your semicolons at the end. 
and then this dot same deal service installer one dot and then this time instead of description it's going to be display name with a capital d and a capital n and uh, just put in here whatever you want to show up on the left side so i'll say um win serve toot just like that is fine um and i could even do like dot demo or something like that you're gonna see these again um so just understand that's kind of an optional step but you have to have some description and some display name so pick something uh, that kind of makes sense for your service and whatever you want to have it do okay so now we're going to go and add a timer and the actual code that's going to do our service um, and I'm not going to dive too much into the actual C sharp code in this video if you are looking for a Windows service to do something specific let me know in the comments what you want to see a service doing and I could make a specific uh, tutorial on how to write that C sharp code. This specifically is a tutorial on how to create that Windows service. So let's keep rolling. Um, now in your system tree under your project installer CS you should see service1.cs as well as service1.designer.cs. Um, and so this time just double click on or it might be open up here um, just go to service1.cs, okay? All right, so the time has come for the actual code that is going to run inside of our service, so telling the service what to do when we um, install it and run it. And I don't wanna spend a ton of time on this because my service is just going to uh, say what time the service was started. Every five seconds while it's running, take a timestamp of the time and save that to the file and then tell you in the log file what time you stop the service. So it's not a super useful service. There's not really a practical application of it. So I'm gonna bring in that code. I'll quickly talk you through it, but then we'll focus on how to make the Windows service installed and running. Okay, so just to quickly talk you through it, the only two modules I have to add into the using section is timers and system.io. Everything else is just the standard ones that come with it. And I set up a timer variable because I am gonna be using that five second interval for the timestamps. Um, so I need one of those. You don't necessarily need a timer if your service isn't doing anything on a clock. Um, but then the pre-built two functions it gives you are what to do on start and what to do on stop. And I'm going to use this uh, function that I create right to file to just say service is started at and then the built-in function to capture whatever the date and time is at that time. But then I start the time elapsed and tracking my interval um, functionality in the on start. We don't need anything fancy like that on stop because we're shutting it down. But so we had to set up a function to tell it what to do when elapsed time has finished. And to do that, I just basically say services recall or service, you can think of this as was ran at whatever time um, it, it currently is on your computer clock then. And then uh, the last thing we need to do is actually set up this write to file function. So this was the most complicated piece in my function, but it's still not too complicated to talk through it. Basically, all we had to do was say the path we want to store this log file in is wherever I have my project in. So whatever C sharp uh, folder we're building this in forward slash logs or backslash logs. Um, if that directory does not exist, we're going to make it. And then if the file service log underscore whatever the date is for this date, then we want to create that file as well. But if the file does exist, we just want to write our message to the line. So it is super straightforward. You don't have to worry too much about what my code is doing, but now I have something here that is supposed to tell you in a log what time it was started, and then every five seconds log what's happening, and then tell you what time has stopped. So I have a service that will do something once we build it and install it, okay? So assuming we did everything right, then we can come over to our system tree on the right and wherever we have the title, so the C-sharp block Windows service tutorial or whatever you called yours, just right click and go with rebuild. Okay, hopefully you get no issues found. That would be great, that is the goal. Um, and then, uh, 
if that is what uh, worked for you, if that is what happened, then you can go to uh, your computer and open up command prompt and make sure to run it as an administrator just in case you need any level of security to add services to whatever machine you're working on. What we wanna do is we want to change the directory to the directory that we're working in. Um, and so for this, it's a pretty simple command, cd, and then the directory that we wanna change it to. So C colon backslash windows, backslash microsoft.net, backslash framework, backslash, and then whatever version you're using. Um, I'm using 4.0.30319. And once you hit enter, it should show you that that's what you're getting. All right, now to actually run the install uh, utility, the command for that looks like this, install util, and then we need to uh, do dot exe, and then we need to add in the entire path, so you don't need this plus, but you need the entire path of where your executable lives. So right click on your build again within Visual Studio, open file in uh, File Explorer, open folder in File Explorer, and then navigate to bin, and then debug, and then your executable should be in here, um, type application, and so Windows Service Tutorial. So what you wanna do is you wanna copy this entire path into that command prompt, just like that. And then, um, so I'll try and make that a little bigger for you. Uh, and then you need to add onto here the name of your service. So this was Windows, oop, capital I, Windows Service Tutorial dot exe just like that okay and so that should be all that you have to do to actually get it to show up on your services loadout so when i hit enter if we did everything right you get this really quick blast through of it creating the service and putting it on your computer and then you should have the commit phase completed successfully the transacted install has completed if you get an error message at this point double and triple check that pathing. So it needs to be install util.exe and then the entire path to direct it into your project dot, uh, and then backslash bin, backslash debug, backslash the name of your service dot exe. That should be all you need to run. Um, now we have put the service onto our services.msc file, but it's not running, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, open up the um, run window and just type in services.msc. Okay, so that's gonna open the services window. Um, most of you can get here if you just type services into the Windows key, but this makes us feel like more, um, more of a hacker, right? So, uh, okay, let's go down until we find um, what we just named our service. And so here, remember I said before, whatever we put down in our, um, in our uh, name and description is going to be important now. Um, so again, this is going to be, let's go ahead to the definition of initialized component. Um, so we are looking for this Windows service tutorial. Okay, so here you can see winservetoot.demo, which is what we put in display name is here in the name column. And then what we put in description, which was Windows service tutorial is here in the description folder. Uh, 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 column, excuse me. And so what we can do is if we right click on this now and we tell it to start, it's gonna go ahead and start up and assuming we wrote rock solid code, which I'm sure whatever you want your uh, service to do, it'll it'll be running just fine. Um, now, if what what's really encouraging for mine is that it, it creates a logs folder and a file if it didn't already exist. So I'm gonna open this thing up and what you'll see when I pull this over here for you, oh, when I pull this over here for you, is that I am getting an entry every five seconds and it tells me what time I started up the service. And now if I go ahead and I stop this service, stop the service, okay. Now let me close the old log file and open the new log file. So now you can see it gave me an entry every five seconds while it was running. And then once it stopped, uh, it just sent an entry for what time it stopped at. So again, this 
is really just a super useful tutorial for any kind of Windows service that you want to set up. But if you do have a specific question on how to create a specific service to do a specific task, please do let me know about in the comments below. I will try to uh, make a few of them if there's enough uh, interest in some of these different concepts. Okay, so I think the last really valuable thing we could take a look at together is how to uninstall a service. So if you have created a service that uh, you regret or it's outlived its usefulness and you want to get rid of it, it is really similar to how we installed, okay? So just like before, we need to make sure that we change our working directory. Um, so cd c colon backslash windows backslash microsoft microsoft dot net and then backslash framework and then backslash v4.0.30319. Um, or whatever version you're working with. Um, now we go back to wherever our executable is and do debug. And uh, the command is going to look very similar to the install um, command because it's actually the same tool. It's the install utility.exe. But you need to add in this dash u that tells it to uninstall now. And then copy in that same path like before um, and then add in the Windows service tutorial, the name of the service you're uninstalling just like before and then add .exe to the end, hit enter. It should tell you removing is being removed, successfully removed, uninstall is completed. Those are the, the messages that you're looking for. Again, the most common issue you'll get here um, if it does throw an error for you is your file path will be looking incorrect or maybe you forgot that minus you. Um, but so double check your file path, be really meticulous about that. But now if we go to Windows Service, you can see it's still there because um, this doesn't refresh while I have it open, but I'm gonna go ahead and refresh the entire services thing and you can see it's gone now. Um, so that is how you get rid of Windows services that maybe have outlived their usefulness or are doing more harm than good. Okay, so I hope that this tutorial provides you the basics of how to create a Windows service using C Sharp and Visual Studio using the Windows.NET framework. Um, I know that it is a somewhat complicated thing and it strays a little away from the usual like friendly Python content on the channel, but I had to do one of these for work and I honestly just thought it would be a great tutorial for the uh, channel. So. Be sure to leave a like if you found this useful. Subscribe to the channel for a ton more great content. Let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see more of on the channel or what you'd like to see next. And as always, thank you guys for watching. And until next time, bye.